Hello and welcome. Welcome to day six, the power of emotional language. Yesterday we spoke about the extraordinary relationship between our mind and our emotions and the importance of developing a fluent emotional language. Thoughts and emotions are mutually responsive to one another. Emotions generate thoughts and thoughts generate emotions. There's a direct relationship between the two. It's like a dance and the kind of communication that takes place between our mind and our emotions will determine how well they dance together, how easy and how flowing the dance will be. Eckhart Tolle said, life is the dancer and you are the dance. The dance that we make, the steps that we create, will be a reflection of the kind of communication and the kind of conversation that takes place between our mind and our emotions. When our emotions fall into the camp of the more uneasy, uncomfortable, uh, difficult and challenging feelings, if we lack an emotional language and we are frightened or confused by our emotions, then the kind of thoughts that we tend to generate are often critical and judgmental. And I think we all know that if we're unhappy and someone starts to criticize us, we will simply become more unhappy. Any kind of judgmental and critical thinking will simply make us feel worse. When we develop a fluent language between our mind and our emotions, and we understand that all of our emotions are giving us helpful and valuable information, we can generate thoughts that are welcoming, interested, caring and compassionate. And I think we all know that if we're unhappy and someone receives us with interest and care and compassion, it's highly likely that we'll begin to feel better or at the very least, our more challenging emotions will remain at the same level of intensity. So we can see that it's so important to receive our emotions with compassion and care rather than criticism and judgment. Any kind of internal self-criticism will actually reduce our self-confidence and lower our self-esteem and this in turn will generate further difficult and challenging emotions. Over the years I've met many, many people who have a huge inner critic and they are incredibly unforgiving of themselves. Indeed, most of them would never dream of speaking to someone else in the way that they speak to themselves. They wouldn't dream of treating anyone else so badly. When I meet someone who is very self-critical, I ask them to imagine a close friend or family member, someone they really care about sitting in front of them. And I ask them what they would think and how they would respond if this person were in a similar situation to themselves. Would they be critical and tell them how stupid they are and make them feel really bad about themselves? Or would they be supportive, kind, caring, compassionate, and try to help them to find a way forwards? The answer is always simple. When we have a strong internal critic, it may take more than one go to challenge and shift this well-established inner voice. After all, for most of us, our inner critic will have been around for a long, long time, often going back as far as our childhood. I actually notice that with some people, when they begin to notice their inner critic, they notice the critical voice within. Um, if we're trying to challenge this voice, they then start to criticize themselves for being critical. 
So it's incredibly important that when we notice ourselves, that we do so with kindness and interest before very gently challenging those old perspectives. The internal conversations that we have with ourselves and the language we use will really decide whether this powerful relationship between our mind and our emotions will be one of harmony and natural flow. These conversations will decide the nature of our dance. So let's value our capacity to develop a responsive conversation between our mind and our emotions. And let's give ourselves permission to create the kind of dance that we long to participate in. Let's welcome and receive all of our emotions. Let's allow our mind to dance with our emotions. Let's meditate together. As we begin this meditation, we will focus on our thought for today. Care and compassion support me. Care and compassion support me. In the first part of our meditation, as you hear the singing bowl, we will focus on allowing the release of any stored up emotional tension. And we'll also be mindful to release any kind of criticism and any kind of judgment. And we can let go of any need for self analysis or, or mental understanding. We can allow our mind to let go of any need to know. In the second part of our meditation, when you hear the singing bowl again, we will move to a place of stillness and a place of calm, a place of thoughtful limits, knowing that we can choose to return to a place of further release at a later time. Making sure that you are in a safe place, get into a comfortable position and close your eyes Allow yourself to breathe naturally, gently and deeply. Now simply bring your awareness to any areas of tension, any areas of unease or discomfort in your body and allow yourself without any kind of judgment and any kind of mental understanding to simply encourage that part of your body to speak. Welcome and allow that part of your body to be heard and to have a voice. As you breathe out, encourage any tension and any emotional energy associated with that part of your body to surface and to simply arrive without judgment and without blame and without any form of criticism. Just a, a gentle acceptance, a gentle welcome a space of care and compassion. Welcome any emotions that are needing to surface. Welcome any emotions that need to be heard and simply allow them to be released. 
and as you release, return yourself to breathing gently, encouraging and allowing your body to relax. When we welcome our emotions, when we release any tension that is causing us concern and influencing our perspective of our life experiences, when we let go of any habitual patterns of thinking, we can engage in an open and thoughtful and, and receptive conversation. We can engage with ourselves with care and compassion. And in doing so, we can, we can change the nature of our dance. to listen and welcome our emotions. When we clear a space for possibility, we can, we can become active in, in creating the kind of steps that we want to be taking in our lives. We can be active in creating the kind of dance that will truly reflect the kind of life that we would really wish for ourselves. It's time to place a safe boundary around this part of our meditation. It's time to bring the release of emotions to a close. As we clear the space within ourselves, we can begin to relax and move gently into a space of stillness. 
a space of presence and a space of calm. Continue to breathe naturally, gently and deeply. And as you hear the singing bowl again, we'll draw our meditation to a close.
it's time to draw our meditation to a close. Throughout the day, remind yourself from time to time of our thought for today. Care and compassion support me. Care and compassion support me. Keep this thought in your mind and perhaps write it on a piece of paper and carry it with you. Be mindful of this thought and bring your attention to the kind of conversations that are taking place in your mind. And become active in reminding yourself to, to be involved in thoughtful and caring and compassionate conversations within. At any stage in our lives, we can learn a new language. And in committing to learning an emotional language, our mind and our emotions can dance together with ease in a mutually supportive relationship. Take care.